This is Desm101. Thanks for tuning in. Now that the PlayStation Classic has been released, I thought that means it'd be a good time to talk about the PlayStation TV again in the context of playing PlayStation games and see how well does this hold up. It's a pretty small and convenient little system. And you can see it has Ethernet ports, HDMI, USB. And I picked mine up when it first came out. It was around $100 and I got it with one of these DualShock 4 controllers just to use with my PlayStation TV. And I was mostly expecting it to be compatible with all the Vita games, but uh, unfortunately, unfortunately Sony blacklisted a bunch of those games. And one of the other big problems was these memory cards. They were overpriced and you could only find them in these smaller storage sizes. So you'd have to pay a ton of money for like 4 or 16 gigs or 8 gigs and you'd have to figure out how to manage them. They were very easy to lose and you'd be trying to carry them around with your PlayStation Vita. So one of the things that I did was to go ahead and hack it with Henkaku and with uh, devices like this you can load in um, micro SD cards. It makes it a lot easier for file storage or like I'm going to be using today for the PlayStation TV since it has a USB port you can use external USB devices. And so what I do is I just manage the games through there on different USB drives when I want to load up a different set of games and it works good. So let's check it out. We're going to be testing the games through Adrenaline which is the PSP emulator for PlayStation TV. So it basically makes the PlayStation TV boot up in PSP mode. So that, uh, it gives us a few nice options here for um, changing the settings. And the interface is pretty familiar if you've ever used a PlayStation Portable. It's just the same as that. And I put a few games on here for testing just to see how they run. And have, I've had pretty good success so far. And one thing to note is that, uh, like I said before, you can go ahead and change some of the settings. So one of them that I recommend for playing PlayStation 1 games is to uh, overclock the system. That way you won't experience as much slowdown or sometimes some glitchiness can happen. So there's that familiar boot up screen. We don't get that uh, power up noise that the PlayStation made, unfortunately, so that's definitely missing. And the game takes a uh, normal load time. I'll show some settings later where you can adjust that. And a good game to start with is Konami's masterpiece, Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Probably my favorite game ever. So what we'll do is uh, load up my save here and just uh, test out some of the visual settings, the filters and options that we can change. So this game was a huge deal for its time because everybody was switching to 3D and they pulled off the best 2D game ever to kind of answer a lot of those demands. So you can see it looks pretty good, plays accurate, as expected. And with the current visual settings you might notice a bit of the shimmering in the background. There's some kind of uh, issues with the scrolling. So what we'll do is go ahead and open the settings and have a look at the adrenaline options that we can modify. So you've got filtering and you've got smoothing and then um, you can tell what mode that you want it to output. So that's the most important one. The, the mode is 
exactly uh, pixel perfect if it's original and then normal and the rest are all upscaling it from the original pixel perfect which results in some of those oddities so with the specific filter settings on the um, on the picture mode then you can really fine-tune it for either uh, pixel games 2d games or maybe use some of the smoothing effects for the 3d games which I think it's helpful to try them differently on a game by game basis so you can't really manage like profiles unfortunately but uh, you can kind of uh, make your own notes and, and figure out what you think is the best for uh, what kind of output you prefer so you can see when you put it on original it gives it a the borders around it but this is where you're able to achieve the most clarity and accuracy with the pixels when you start using those other video modes then you'll see more of the shimmy shimmering and more of the uh, the errors on like the refresh rate and things like that So you can see when you choose normal, it, it boosts it up just a little bit to fill the screen size more. And so some of the video options, uh, filter options like LCD are intended more for use on the Vita. And I think that this emulator was developed with the intent of it primarily being used on the PlayStation Vita. So, um, but it, of course that's compatible with PlayStation TV. So. It's kind of neat just to go and really test out to see what uh, what you can do with it. Some of them aren't always so great. Some of the results are kind of bad. But that way you kind of know what uh, your different options are like. And yeah, I never want to stretch it to fill the, the screen. It looks all distorted. So I never really like those options to, to stretch it in most cases, but I guess it's okay to have them there. Might as well, just for testing purposes at least. And I generally don't use the, the smoothing option. I think that the filters do their own kind of smoothing in a way. And some of them look kind of like, uh, like scan lines. And the other thing to note is that um, op updates, as the Adrenaline app is updated, you might see some more video options show up. You know, no guarantees. There's not even a guarantee if it'll have another update for sure. But thing is, uh, you can check periodically and see if there's another update. All right, so moving on, we'll try a Squaresoft game that I was really fond of, Parasite Eve. This one would have been a really great one to include, I think on the PlayStation Classic. And this is, I feel like Squaresoft was really at the height of their creativity and quality of their output with really unique and kind of groundbreaking titles like this. They were really innovative and really fresh, I think, kind of taking some risks. And this game had a really nice dark and brooding kind of atmosphere and, and there was a couple sequels too. But all I think as a series, it's it's pretty good, pretty creepy, and pretty fun to play. Really like the art style here. I like the look of the pre-rendered backgrounds and then polygonal character interaction. I feel like it's running pretty good. No noticeable uh, issues from, from my perspective. This is a game that's really easy to just sit and play for a few hours. Getting involved in the story and, and uh, listening to the music and the atmosphere and the uh, the fights are pretty unique. The battle system is uh, quite different.
All right, and we'll check out another Squaresoft game now that I was pretty impressed with back in those uh, days, Xeno Gears. And I really like the idea of how they included the RPG elements with uh, the mech battles and mech themes and kind of this crazy futuristic, um, what's it, uh, like mystical kind of uh, story themes that were going on. Pretty cool. And the art style, I really enjoy the art style of this game. I haven't actually played through the whole thing, but uh, the anime characters are real unique, but uh, they fit well with the kind of uh, mech designs and even the, the world design in, in general. And these games, they, uh, you know, the multi-disc games in this format, they're all in a singular file so that you don't have to swap out the discs. It'll automatically... Uh, switch it for you so yeah this game had a great big uh, crazy intro super long intro which is pretty common but pretty cool I mean I think you know it doesn't uh, look great today but uh, it's very interesting for the time and I like I do like how they meld the anime looks with the uh, 3D visuals. And back in these days, uh, in the 90s, I was really into that Neon Genesis Evangelion. Uh, as it was coming out, they would uh, periodically put out the translations on the VHS, and I remember. I was just super into this mech, kind of big mech battle stuff at the time. So this is just right up my alley. And I guess uh, Zone of the Enders kind of did a similar thing later on from Konami. But this just, uh, it felt very fresh for its time. This is one of those reasons that you wanted to have a PlayStation. Alright, uh, next up, uh, you know, I'm a big fan of shooters, and this is another Squaresoft game, one of the best shooters for the PlayStation, definitely one of the most memorable. So yeah, Einhander, this was a very unique game for its time fully 3D polygonal game but with all 2D style gameplay and a unique uh, shift with a cool weapon system can steal the enemy's weapons and equip it for itself very cool art style lots of great like a Blade Runner kind of influence here a really beautiful game very difficult though. Very challenging. Ah, you can see I died right away. There's just so much going on in the background. It's really easy to uh, get distracted and and miss a, a guy that's coming right at your bullet. You really just have to get used to all that stuff as you're playing. It's a game that's really rewarding if you can uh, learn it. Yeah, I really like all these different weapons that you can choose from. Quite a good variety. This one would have been a great one to see on the PlayStation Classic. Again, really showing off how Squaresoft was pretty amazing back then. You don't see stuff like this from Squaresoft anymore. All 
All right. Now, another timeless classic, in my opinion. Uh, must have for the PlayStation. One of my favorite racing games ever. And that is Wipeout XL. It's hard for me to think of many more racing games in that futuristic racing genre besides F-Zero that had an impact on me in gaming than this one. I played this one just almost non-stop when it came out. I love the music, the tracks, art style felt perfect. And, uh, you know, more recently I played the Sega Saturn version, but it can't, uh, it can't live up to this original PlayStation release. Still a, a beautiful game, and in my opinion, probably the best in the series. I, I haven't played every single Wipeout game, but all the old ones. I have the third one, and I have the PSP games. Great series. And I feel like it runs pretty good on here, not 100% accurate. I feel like there are some spots where it can stutter or slow down so that's a little annoying sometimes one of the the things that's lacking about the PlayStation TV is that the, it doesn't have a hundred percent compatibility with the games library for PlayStation but it is quite playable One of the things that the Sega Saturn version can't pull off is the lens flare that's on that uh, thrust at the back of the ship. It has to use a, a mesh gradient kind of thing. But here it's like a transparency with a lighting effect. It's It looks so cool. The races are pretty quick here, just two laps. A very addictive game. This is another one I would have been super impressed if they included this on the PlayStation Classic. Alright, and now let's move on to a platformer game. This one is a well-known game, Klonoa. And it's kind of like a 2.5D platformer where you've got 3D backgrounds and characters and stuff, um, but uh, 2D gameplay. Pretty impressive looking for its time. This was one of my favorite kind of genres from around then is uh, you know, incorporating both uh, the 3D look with the 2D gaming. And I feel like they did it pretty effectively here. The mechanics in the game are a little weird to get the hang of at first. It revolves around how you grab onto and throw these enemies and jumping off of them after you've grabbed them. It's a little, little weird at first. But this is definitely a game you hear people talk about a lot for the PlayStation 1 as far as uh, best games. You know, it's got a lot of character. I think there's very cool um, music and the character's pretty memorable and unique.
And now you're supposed to jump uh, on top of an enemy or something right there, but I can't remember exactly uh, how to do it. It's like pressing a direction at the... And similarly, here's Tomba. Exactly the same type of game, but uh, with a different character. Also very fondly remembered from the PlayStation, PlayStation era. It's got some like uh, puzzle solving kind of elements where you have to figure out uh, ways to get farther in the level. Very colorful and bright game. Controls are a little weird though. The jumping is, is odd. He does kind of like a belly flop every time he jumps. You have to get used to it. Not exactly the most responsive controls. But it looks great. It looks awesome. This is one I didn't actually play back in the in the original PlayStation era. I do remember seeing like ads and reviews for it though. Alright, now here's a game I did own. Raystorm from Taito. An awesome shooter game for the PlayStation. And this is from uh, Galactic Attack. It's a sequel to Galactic Attack, aka Layer Section. And there was a sequel that was also on the original PlayStation called uh, Ray Crisis. So it's a game, a series that started on the arcade and now it ended on the PlayStation. And I actually have an update to this game that I purchased for the Xbox 360, a downloadable game. And it's an HD version of this. It plays really well. But yeah, this is one of those games when I played it, it was at the end of high school and I remember I took the PlayStation with me to college. And uh, this really got, I mean, I was into shooters, but this got me super into playing them even more. I always liked the Gradius games and uh, and some shooters like that, but this just kind of got me more into the like vertical scrolling shooters. You know, I think it still holds up well today. It really shows off how well the PlayStation could handle lots of 3D details and textures and have it mapped out pretty nice. And I think the PlayStation TV is running it pretty decently here. I don't really notice uh, many problems. try some more settings here. This is Project Guy Res, which is a clone of Virtual On from Sega. So it's actually very close and similar to that game with uh, the robots looking almost exactly the same and having a very similar move set. But it's not bad. It was only released in Japan. So right now you can see it kind of has like a a uh, scan line effect on it. It's on original screen size, I think. So 
So what I'll do is I'll switch it back here so you can kind of see. This is a very polygonal game. Super simple polygons. So you can kind of see the jaggedness there and then we'll just switch it back to bilinear. It's still very sharp but a little, little cleaner. So yeah, you can tell it plays identically to Virtual On. Pretty much the characters just look a little different, but the moves are pretty much the same. If you've played that game. You know, it's not a bad thing. I think it's fascinating to find out about games like this. So, you know, it's kind of like a bootleg version of Virtual On for the PlayStation. An official release in Japan. Pretty cool game. Worth checking out. It's not great. But uh, worth checking out if you're into this kind of gameplay. So I'll try to swap the settings again. So you can see you get like a way more of this kind of uh, grid effect on some of the, like on sharp bilinear. So again, probably not meant for display on a larger TV flat screen. More probably intended for the Vita. So yeah, the 720p of the PlayStation TV output looks pretty good, but it's not the, the best quality. And the 1080i is just not even worth it. Here's another shooter, the Darius, G Darius for PlayStation. Of course, I love the Darius series. I love shooters. There's another series from Taito that uh, debuted in the arcades. Had releases on the Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, Sega Saturn. And this was one of the first ones that uh, fully incorporated 3D looks into the visuals. Not just like the bosses, but also ships. And I think it holds up okay. It looks very blocky. Maybe not as good as the, the normal 2D Darius games from this time period, but still it pulls it off pretty well. The gameplay is real fast and faithful to original series. So I feel like the PlayStation does have a pretty nice library of shooters on the system. And this is with the the filter on it, so I think it looks okay in this uh, case because of the high use of the polygons. It's really hard to tell that it's using any kind of a filter on there. I always think that the music in the Darius series is very creative. Some pretty cool music. Pretty intense game for the first level. Lots of bullets everywhere. Pretty fast action. Alright, we're going to move on to the party pack. Um, specifically just for one game. This is a Williams uh, compilation. And Smash TV is the one I'm 
wanting to show. I thought this is a great version uh, for its time, and it was pretty much arcade perfect port. Or it might just be arcade emulation. I know that uh, Ma uh, Williams doesn't always, or Midway doesn't always put out the highest quality stuff on their compilations. I've had a few situations. Oh, here I wanted to show some of the additional controller settings and uh, things you can try here, like the disk speed. And this game does support the, the dual shock with um, the joysticks, so you can play it like arcade style where you've got the dual dual arcade sticks. So this one in particular is perfect for PlayStation TV with you know with one of those PS4 controllers. And it runs pretty well. You might see some graphical kind of issues there here and there minor like pixel widths or pix pixel shimmering and stuff but again you can kind of fine-tune it pick the filter or remove the filters get it exactly the way you want it to look I think because right now I have it in normal so it's kind of uh, it's stretched a little bit to where some of the pixels are uneven when you use that uh, upscaled option so if you have a zoom function on your TV you can you can use that instead just leave it on original and then zoom in on your TV and then you've got better clarity. But, uh, Smash TV is a game I never get sick of. Super tough, fun, exciting game that uh, really holds up to the test of time. Very much like Robotron. Shout out to Eugene Jarvis for making such amazing arcade games super violent games <laughs> I love how the arcade version is so gory alright and to wrap it up today we're gonna try the Xanak Neo so if you're familiar with old school shooters on the NES, you may remember Xanak. That's uh, a game from Compile. And they're the same developers who made Guardian Legends, so you um, might be familiar with some of the bullets and um, graphics and things like that, sound effects that you've heard from that game show up in here, some of the power-ups. And this is just a phenomenal looking game. You know, it's a Japanese-only PlayStation game, but just talk about really well polished well made shooter definitely one worth checking out if you like well made uh, 2d shooters it still has a very classic kind of gameplay very old school shooter style and compile there you know undeniable kings of the shooter they made the Musha series, uh, which is part of the Alesta series. And they also were responsible for a bunch of the shooters on the TurboGrafx-16. So overall, I think that the PlayStation TV is a pretty solid option. It's not as accurate as something that you might get, of course, directly from a PlayStation 1 and maybe not as good quality output as you get from PlayStation 3 running PlayStation 1 discs. But, you know, if you're into trying it out for yourself, it's definitely something to have a look at. And one thing to note is if you want to play, um, you know, and hack it, then you might have to look for a specific firmware version. But that's going to wrap it up for today, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. Let me know your thoughts on the PlayStation Classic or on the PlayStation TV, if you've got either one of them. And what are some of your favorite games from the PlayStation 1? All right, thanks so much for tuning in, and I hope you have a good one.